right, welcome to Arcade Body Shop, Hurricane Edition. As you can hear, it's pouring outside. I got the doors open, wanted to air out the garage. And I was tired of hanging out inside, so I figured, hey, let's shoot you guys a quick video. I picked up this cabinet uh, yesterday uh, because of the nice weather, and I knew it was going to be crappy. So I picked this up for my good friend Jen Hall, and uh, she was eyeing this thing for a while. She got a great deal on it, and we think it's a joust. Um, I'm pretty sure. I know it's a Williams cab, and uh, she's pretty convinced that it is a joust. Um, so I asked her, I was like, hey, the suspense is killing me. I want to take it off and see if the side art's there. It's such a cool thing. And uh, so it's nasty outside. Got some citrus, citrus strip, which you can use indoors. It's not that bad chemical-wise. I still have a window or a door open uh, to the outside. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to strip the side of it. And we're going to see if the artwork's still there. So it's going to be a fun, quick video. Hopefully we get a big finale for our efforts. Um, so it'd be so nice to take that off and have all the original artwork there. And um, I'm going to show you how I do it with citrus strips. So I just take off the top layer and then hopefully we can save the rest and just buff out the rest of it. So um, yeah, let's take a look at this thing and then we'll get going uh, stripping it down and hopefully we'll find some joust artwork under there. This is definitely a Williams cab, you can definitely tell. And it was converted over to a Buster Brothers. This thing is in good shape though. I mean, if you look at the shape of this thing, like that's what I love about Williams cabinets is they're solid plywood, so they don't really get messed up that much. You know, a little work maybe on that front bottom corner, but most people would even leave that, man. You put some new T-molding on this and, uh, you know, get the artwork and everything on there. And uh, we'll take a look at the back. It is missing the uh, back door, but it's got a nice monitor in there. And it actually has some of the power boards still in there. I think it's missing the soundboard in the main, but it's got all the... Uh, you know, transformer down the bottom. So this will actually be a pretty easy conversion back to the original. And uh, as I said, this is my good friend, Jen Hall. She's amazing. She's probably done, her and Matt Schwartz have done more for me in this hobby than anybody on the face of the planet. Joey Gonzalez too, he's awesome dude. He uh, contributed something really cool uh, to the Pac-Man uh, restore coming up. And uh, so I like to help out my friends and I said, hey Jen, can I take this thing and strip the side just to see if the artwork's there. I really, really want to see. And she said, go for it. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We've got the uh, tropical weather out there in South Carolina. It's all moist and nasty out, but it's actually cooled down quite a bit. So it'll be perfect for this. So we'll get this all set up and then we'll go ahead and start stripping it. All right, here's a quick look at the uh, tools that I'm going to be using for this. This hands down, you got to have this in your garage. Sit your strip. It's really safe. You can get it on your hands as long as you wash your hands off. It's not going to burn or peel your skin. You probably should wear gloves. If you're careful, you can be all right. But, you know, safety, you know, err on the side of safety. Wear gloves if you want to. And then uh, this is just a cheap, like, 50 cent, uh, you know, Harbor Freight brush. And then I'm actually going to put the citrus strip in a paint bucket to put it on. Um, or you can just, if you put the cap down on the side and lay it down. I don't want to damage the artwork on the side of this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and apply the citrus strip with the cabinet staying up. That way it's not sitting down on the actual cabinet and eating down into it. It kind of will just take off that top layer. And then uh, just a scraper. And this is messy, so you want to be able to, you know, get the stuff off, off the floor as soon as it gets down there. You don't want it eating through your concrete paint in your garage floor. So I'm going to go ahead and get all set up and then we'll start applying the citrus strip and hopefully we'll get to that joust artwork. We got everything all set up, we got our tools. And looking at this, it's got this weird black textured paint on it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a good coating of it, almost like painting it. I'm going to paint it with citrus strip, let it sit. You can actually see the paint start to bubble a little bit, and then I'll test an area. Um, the big thing is you want to make sure your scraper is really, really clean, especially if you're trying to save whatever artwork's on there. And this one, I, I kind of bent it a little bit, so you can kind of, it, it's got that scoop. So I'm not digging down into the cabinet. And uh, we'll go ahead and let this sit on here for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll uh, hopefully see that jazz artwork. What do you guys think? You think it's under there? I'm hoping so, because this is kind of like a thick textured paint, so hopefully it saved whatever's under there. And again, uh, sorry about the soothing sounds of rain, man. I, I wanted to keep the garage door open uh, so I don't die with this stuff. But yeah, it's this simple, man. Put it, put it in the cup. A good batch of it, and then we'll just start painting it on.
Whoa. On the floor. Like I said, a lot of times I lay the calves down when I do this, but this, if the artwork is under there, I don't want it to eat so much into the paint. I just want to get a coat on here to start eating away at this black paint. And I tell you, this, this citrus strip stuff's awesome because it's really strong taking the paint off. I'm gooping it all over the floor. I'll have to wipe that up in a minute. But uh, it's not so strong that you know it'll eat all the way down to the bare wood right away. So if you're careful when doing this, you can save artwork. I've done it before on some of them. You just really got to watch it and not walk away from it. You know, you'll, you'll see when it's starting to bubble up. And then you just test an area and see if it's ready to go. And like I said, this is a messy process, so. Where this texture paint is sucking this stuff up. Which I guess is a good thing. And there's really no right or wrong on how much stuff to put on here. You just want to make sure every bit of it's wet. If you see it sucking into it and it's dry, go back and hit that spot. I'll be so excited for her if the joust artwork is under here. I was talking to her last night and I was like, man, this cabinet is in really good shape. I was surprised and upset myself that I didn't find it for myself. No, but uh, Jen has actually found a lot of games for me. Um, She's like a hound dog, man. She, she watches Craigslist and, and uh, eBay and finds parts. I mean, she already found a set of new old stock uh, joysticks for this thing, even before she has it in her hands. So that's what you gotta do in this hobby. You just gotta keep your eyes out. This hobby does not have to be an expensive hobby. I mean, it's kind of expensive, but you know, if you can learn how to fix these games and do them yourself, you can get treasures like this, man, for not a lot of money. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this all the way down to the bottom, get a good coat on it. Then we'll come back and we'll give it about 10-15 minutes. We'll take a look at it, see if we can start stripping some stuff. And I hope the Joust artwork's under there. I really want it to be. So we'll find out. Alright, welcome back. It's been sitting now probably about 10 minutes. I don't want to go crazy long on this because I noticed with Citrus Strip, if you give it time and you, and you time it out just right, it kind of only eats through like one layer of paint at a time. And I don't know how many layers of this black paint's on there. It's a weird, like, black textured, almost like Reiner liner paint. But the good thing is, hopefully it protected what's underneath it. So I don't know what's underneath it. You don't know. We're going to learn out together. Uh, I think it's ready to go, so I'm going to start scraping. I'm going to go up first just to see if it's totally ready, and then we'll start scraping it down. Uh-oh. I see it. What? I'm starting to see something, man. And we might have to do this in, in a couple layers. And you definitely need a trash bucket. I'll, sh I'll show you in a second. This stuff's coming off. And this is the whole deal. We don't want to go deep down through this layer of paint because it will start affecting the, the cabinet paint. So we want to try to get this off and then lightly as much as we can. And she is going to re-stencil this cabinet. I just wanted to see how much of the artwork we could save, if any. I am definitely seeing the gel spur, so she was correct. She was a correct. The original artwork was on there. And you can hear the crunch, it, it's this weird 
textured paint. Like, I've never seen this on cabinet before. I can definitely see the brown coming through. so it doesn't continue to eat through before I do another layer of citrus strip. So we'll spray down the cabinet. And if you're doing MDF, you gotta be super careful. Remember it goes down around the bottom, it'll swell your cabinet. I've done it, it sucks. Especially when you're almost done with the cabinet. What about this new uh, simple green orange scent, huh? Doesn't really smell much different. I just think they put different color in it. So we'll give this a rub. And even with that, you see more paints coming off. And like I said, this is really just to stop the citrus strip from going any further. games man just like don't paint the sides keep them the same and just put them in between two games save that side art I bet you a lot of operators though nowadays they can go back in time and see how much these cabins are going for they would have done things a lot differently You can see some, uh, see some joust through there. It's peeking out. I see a little bit of ostrich. So we're going to go ahead and do a second coat and we'll see, uh, see if we can get some more of it out. All right, guys, I let this sit for a couple more minutes and the original Williams paint is super thin. So I saw the brown is coming through and uh, I want to try to save as much of this as possible. So when I see it like this, where it's starting to stuff up like this, I want to try to do it just by hand. So we're going to have to go just elbow grease. And uh, you can really get this off now because now all the paint is already softened. I don't want to do another layer of citrus strip. I think it will go too far. Um, so you can actually do this part with just really simple green, some paper towels and some elbow grease. And you know, on the tough spots, get yourself a magic eraser and you'll be surprised how much of this comes out. But we'll start from the top 
And uh, you know, I'll fast forward some of this if we have to, but uh, I want to try to save as much of the artwork. So we're just gonna have to put some uh, elbow grease into it and see what happens. So this is just simply rubbing, and that way you're not going too hard where you're gonna take off too much paint. And this black paint that's on here, it's just kind of like balling off. So more and more will get revealed as we go. Oh, look at that. I think you might be able to tape off some of this and save it. My wife helps me out a lot on these. She's a She's an artist and a photographer, and uh, sometimes I let her loose on some of these stenciled ones, and you know, you'd be amazed what you can get done by hand. Like sometimes she'll, you know, tape off a section of it, and then she'll get it looking to match the original. I've had her do uh, bezels for me, touch up bezels. It's appearing slowly. What? It's so exciting when you find a cab and you're like, hey, I think that used to be a joust. And then you get it home, and then it is what you thought. And uh, people ask me about my journey, that's how I got it. I saw it, nobody wanted it. It was converted to a last gold pajama. And I was looking at it, I was like, hey, that's got two speaker grills on top. And it's that weird shaped cabinet. You know what, I'll risk 150 bucks. And I got the, the journey cab for $150. Now nothing was in it, and it took me 18 months to find all the parts, but I got an original journey pack. Step back, take a look at that. It's coming out, guys. Slowly but surely. So I'm going to keep going. Ah, you know what? We'll just roll tape. We'll speed this up. And like I said, a uh, magic eraser works too. Like I got a big spot up here that's pretty good. And the way magic eraser works, it's basically like a 6,000 grit sandpaper. So it'll eat right through this stuff. Check it out. And you are going to go through some paper towels on this, buddy. For sure. I can't believe it's all under there, man. I really think you can save this. Even if you just taped up the bird and then 
repainted the brown where it's scuffed off and gone. Like, I don't even think I did that. These look like scrapes, you know, and I never, I just went up and down. These are scrapes, so I think they might be on the cabinet. When, who knows? We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and pause it. I'll go a little farther down because this paint right here is really thick. I don't want you guys just to sit there the whole time while I'm scrubbing that thing. So I'll come back in a little bit. We'll get a little farther, and I'll give you guys an update. All right, I went ahead and got uh, some of the thick stuff off, and this is too cool. This is the bird's body, so I didn't want you guys to miss this part. Um, so we're just doing the same, wetting it down, rubbing it, using the uh, magic eraser. And I'm gonna keep going with the magic eraser on this part because it's pretty thick. God, I'm so excited for her, man. Like I said, Janet is one of my best friends in the arcade hobby. Just an amazing giving person. Just cares about it. She cares about the hobby. She cares about the games. You know, Jen Hall was one of the first friends I met when I, I started this. And uh, like I said, she found me a bunch of my games, man. She's like, what do you want? And uh, like a hound dog, man, she found them. And, uh, and she found them at cheap prices for me. And, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest key to that is to learn the shapes of the cabs. Be able to look at a, a golden tee and be like, oh, that's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Or be able to look at a, you know, a, this cabinet, a Buster Brothers, and be like, oh, that's a joust. With amazing joust side art on it. Yeah, man, I'm gonna talk to her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest just touching up the brown on this. Especially since the cab doesn't need a lot of repair. I think you can touch this up very easy. Make sure your shoulders are in good shape if you're going to attempt this. Because this is some elbow breaking work, man. But it's worth it. Especially as much as she's done for me in the hobby, man. I can, I can go ahead and do this much. Let her fix the rest of it. But I'll go ahead and give this a wipe down. See how we're looking. Oh, look at that. God, this cabinet is in good shape. I mean, even the red, the red's like super vibrant. And uh, you know, this is gonna take a little while. Normally what I do is try to get the whole thing stripped down. And then I might come back with some like uh, rubbing alcohol, spray some rubbing alcohol and wipe it down. And that'll eat up some of these last little bits that are sticking on. Because repros and stencils are nice, but not as nice as this. Like I said, I would just probably match that brown and Touch it up, and I would leave this. And this is a messy job. Do not do this in your dining room. Have lots of simple green, lots of paper towels on hand. Yeah, so I live in uh, South Carolina, and the uh, tropical depression is just getting here now. It's so crazy. I went, I went to school in upstate New York before I grew up, and I remember we used to have to go to school in like three feet of snow. And here, they're letting the kids out three hours early because it's raining. I don't get it. And I'm sure all the milk and bread is gone. Out of the stores. Oh man, it's getting there. Alright, we 
you got a good chunk of this part, what I'm gonna do is take a break, uh, wash my hands. I gotta go get another magic eraser. That one's almost done. And uh, then I'll pre-do the bottom part and then I'll come back with you guys and we'll get it out and we'll take a look at the artwork. And that's time to rub some more. Now, total time from the time I started till now, maybe an hour. Um, so this isn't that bad of a deal to do. It's just labor intensive. But man, if you can save the original artwork, especially on these Williams ones, where they're stenciled out of factory, that's awesome. I looked, I didn't have another magic eraser, so we're gonna have to go get on it. But like right here, see all that that's there? It will come off. Get this bird. And like I said, this is done in layers. It's like, you know, like you're trying to restore artwork. You don't want to dig all the way down to the bottom layer. So, I mean, if there's some chunks and stuff, I'm going to leave it. Because when I spray it down with alcohol later, it'll eat that last little part. Because it's already loosened up from the citrus strip. Like, you could attack this right from the beginning with, like, alcohol and and all that stuff, but you're going to be doing a ton of work, man. Like, this is already a ton of work, but it would not be coming off this easy. Man, I forgot how cool Joust Cat looks. What do you think, guys? I thought it was under there. She was convinced it was under there. The thing that sucks is a lot of times when they do these cabinet conversions, they'll sand it. They'll sand the artwork first to make the paint stick. And, uh, and then you're kind of screwed at that point. But for real, I mean, this looks nice, other than the scuff marks. And like I said, here's another part where the, the brown paint's off. And it's going left to right, and I never scraped that way. I scraped up and down. Um, so I really think this is just scuff marks from sliding in between cabinets when it was originally out there. Same thing up here. There's a lot of scuffs up here. But there's not hardly anything on the artwork. So um, that really does say to me, I don't think we did that when we were stripping it because they're going left to right, which I only scraped up and down. And then also it's not on this, which is twice as thick as the brown because they did the brown first, then probably the yellow, then probably the light, light yellow, and then did red. Or no, they probably did yellow, red, and then light yellow. That's what it looks like to me. But each one's a different stencil. But the colors and the artwork on the actual bird are vibrant. I think we almost got the whole bird exposed except for this foot. Flip that around, make sure you guys can see that. See that foot? There we go. Want to make sure you see all of the glory of it. We worked hard for this. Oh, there's the toenail. there. God, that looks good. So excited.
Okay, clean up these toenails. It's like a nail salon. Get some new fresh paper towels in here. There's the whole bird, man. Let's step back and look at it. See what we got. There she is, man. Looking pretty sexy. Now, like I said, uh, the scrapes, I don't think we did those because look how good the artwork looks. And again, sorry for the soothing sounds of rain. It's starting to really come down out there. But uh, these scuff marks, I can see they're going in the vertical fashion. So, you know, I don't, I don't think we did that for, for real. So I'm gonna get the rest of this cleaned up. I'm not gonna show you guys the bottom part because that's just exposing brown paint, nothing exciting. So I'll go ahead and get that all off. I'll wipe the cabinet down and we'll see what's left. And then we'll go ahead and hit for the last bit with the, uh, Magic Eraser, I'll probably run out and go get some of those in the monsoon. And uh, we'll get some uh, spray alcohol and just see how clean we can get this. But I'm surprised, man. This looks amazing as is. And uh, I'll just finish it off. We'll get the bottom. I'll get the rest of the black off. When we come back, we'll do the final cleanup. And, uh, and we'll talk about it, man. All right. I got the cabinet pretty much cleaned up now. I uh, got all the black off it. What I did is I went ahead and I put some uh, rubbing alcohol. Just regular household rubbing alcohol. You can get it anywhere, CVS, any of that. And I uh, put it in here and I uh, got another magic eraser. I had one left. And what this is gonna do is just take off the residue and any of these black spots that are stubborn. And you wanna have a dry paper towel, you wanna have your sponge and just start working. And I'm gonna work my way down and get this as clean as I can. And what I'm trying to do is just get this last bit of black off here without messing up any of the other colors. And it's taking, it's taking just the black off. And the key to this whole thing is light pressure. You don't, when you're down to this last level, you, you can mess up the real artwork. So you just want to do a real soft touch. We want to get as much of the natural color as we can. Especially on the neck, like there's a lot of the black still on there. See how much we can brighten it up. Take your time every now and then and wipe, see how much stuff came off still. And you don't want to saturate this thing with alcohol, because alcohol will eat the, the paint as well. But this is just going to take the last bit of that black residue off here and make it super bright.
It's amazing what like five dollars worth of cleaning stuff. And it's just about two hours worth of work you can potentially save your artwork. Like I said, I'm scrubbing very lightly. I don't want to go too far. I want to go ahead and get the uh, simple green. Great thing about this, I'm not really seeing any black anymore up on this end. like that was before, this is after, so we're getting there. And the key to this part is you already want to have most of the paint off. This is just for the kind of wipe out that residue, get the less of the black off, get the last if there's any citrus strip on it, this will just eat that off. Feels smooth now. All right, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to clean up this stuff. We'll stand up the cab, we'll take a look at it, and then we'll finish this out. All right, guys, there you have it. We skinned it, we took the, all the old black paint off. Um, you know, we might have ate through some of it, but overall, I mean, it looks really good. Like, just redoing the brown on this would be amazing. Matching up the brown and just redoing the brown. You know, this, you know, the actual artwork part looks really good. And uh, I guess the key to this whole thing, guys, is what I wanted to show you today, is you can do it with just a little elbow grease, and some time, you can you can bring back some original artwork. Some guys would be fine with this. Like I said, a lot of these scrapes up here, I really think that was from the cabinet sliding in and out. Especially since the artwork is basically untouched. A um, little bit on the Williams logo is gone here. But I mean, all that stuff would be real easy to tape off and just touch up. Um, so, you know, my suggestion to her is I wouldn't even re-stencil it. I would just touch this up by hand, and uh, and I bet you it'll look like a million bucks. So, I don't know if I'll do the other side. Jen's a pretty good friend, but that was a lot of work. Probably about, I said two hours, probably about an hour and 45 minutes uh, nonstop if I didn't take a break. Um, 
but it came out amazing. And uh, you know, the big key to this as well is, you know, Jen was patient. She wanted a joust. She looked. She watched. She found one posted, and uh, it was a Buster Brothers. So most people, when they look, you know, they'll be like, ah, Buster Brothers for the game. I don't want it. If you realize what's underneath it, you can get some really amazing cabinets for not a lot of money. And, and like I said, you know, hour and 45 minutes, so let's say four hours. You strip both sides, it looks amazing. You touch up some paint, maybe five, ten dollars more, you got a really solid cabinet and ready to start, you know, finding boards and piece, you know, PCBs and, and sound boards and all that stuff. And surprisingly enough, this actually has three out of the five boards in it. So sometimes they just left pieces in there. So, uh, you know, definitely take your time, look out there, Craigslist, you know, check, check out online, and just keep your eye open for things, and you can find some deals. So, super happy this is under here. I'll probably, I'll probably do the other side. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's the same thing. You know, maybe I'll throw up some, uh, you know, after pictures once I get it all set up. Who knows? Maybe I'll get my wife to come out here and do this for Jen. Uh, she's a good friend of mine. Like I said, she found a lot of games for me. So, all right. I told you guys I'd bring you some cool stuff till October. October 2016, Pac-Man Restore, we're doing it. I got everything for it. We're ready to go. I'm shipping off the uh, the harness to my buddy Ken at Golden Age Arcade. And uh, you know he's gonna redo the end pieces and all the connectors and everything brand new. It's sat underwater for like three weeks, so God knows how those connectors are. They're already bad to begin with. So let's just start fresh. It will be the original harness from the cabinet though, which is really cool, because I wanted to keep all the original parts. So we got that coming up, and I'm gonna film some other cool stuff. Maybe we'll get into that Centipede Cabaret. Try to get that video monitor working on that. So until next time, keep it locked here. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Let's build this channel. Arcade Body Shop. Thanks. It's Jeff. I'll see you next time.